All right. Welcome everybody who's starting to arrive. We're just going to give folks a couple minutes to arrive for this webinar and then we'll get started. Great, I see some folks starting to pop in here. Nice. Excellent, welcome everybody. We're just giving just a little few more moments to let folks arrive for this event. All right, great. Lots of folks arriving, nice on time. Kudos everyone. All right, let's, let's get started. Welcome everyone to this Mapbox webinar. I am your host, Marina Smith. Today I am joined by special guest, Mikhail Klim, the CTO and partner of Commerce UI. Commerce UI is a team of world-class developers who build headless e-commerce sites that help brands grow. In our 30 minutes, uh, we're going to start with some quick context on Mapbox for those of you who are new to Mapbox. Then we'll learn more about Commerce UI and their clients, including the importance of location technologies and how and why Commerce UI builds with Mapbox. We'll discuss best practices as well for building custom store locator maps, including a behind the scenes tour of how Mikhail built Commerce UI's most recent locator map for their client Lift Foils. And we'll keep some time for questions from the audience. So if you are watching this session live, please feel welcome to ask questions through the Q&A function and we'll do our best to answer them live or in the chat. All right, so Mapbox, for those of you who are new to Mapbox, let me tell you a little bit about us. We equip organizations to innovate with location technology. And this innovation takes many forms because location underpins so many aspects of daily life and decision making. Whether you're planning and tracking a run with Strava, or maybe taking a tier scooter to get around town, ordering food for delivery on Instacart or on Wolt, or perhaps you're navigating in a Toyota Tundra or Rivian. All of these cases, you're using Mapbox technology. And this need for location intelligence is everywhere. Mapbox exists to help our customers build with maps and location services to better serve their clients and grow their businesses. Today, over 3.9 million registered developers build with the Mapbox platform and more than 700 million monthly active users of apps that use Mapbox power 2.1 billion miles of road data every week. And that in turn equips us to make over 100,000 map updates every single day. That's the power of a living location platform. The modular architecture of the Mapbox platform means that any developer, any company like Commerce UI can build a location intelligent application tailored to their needs, whether it's for web, mobile, or even within vehicles. And really it's the stories of what Mapbox customers build that illuminate the full potential of the Mapbox platform. So that's why we love to host conversations like this one with Commerce UI to share in more detail how Mapbox is helping them innovate in their industry. So without further ado, Michael, I'd like you to invite you to set the scene for us. Who is Commerce UI and what do you build? All right. Uh... Yeah, let me maybe share screen here. Um, all right, so hello everyone. Uh, thank you for having me uh, here. So a um, couple of words about the Commerce UI. Uh, so we are a small boutique agency uh, that basically builds modern e-commerce for design-driven brands. Uh, so we feel very confident working for uh, fashion, luxury, sport, or technology brands or lifestyle brands as 
as lift voice. Uh, so, and we supporting them with their brand grow and uh, grow in their technology field. So, uh, I think one of the our unique uh, uniqueness is being that we. As a development team, we understand design pretty well, and uh, we work very close uh, with the UX, and we know how to transform the design into the code. So, yeah. Yeah, the full team. And Mikhail, why are mapping and location services important for Commerce UI and in the wider e-commerce world? You know, what, what makes a store locator an important feature to invest in? All right. Uh, yeah, so th there are a number of reasons for that, but generally, I, uh, starting maybe from more like an e-commerce perspective, I would say for some time right now, a lot of brands are invested or investing into, you know, this omni-channel seamless experiences of their brands. So basically, mm, mm, basically, it's just natural way for customers to seek uh, more information about the product. So it's really important to to be able to to show your brand to to uh, to advertise your brand through the, those different channels uh, and support each of these channels uh, through through those. So um, we notice that how whenever the product is more advanced or more complex, it's just a natural path uh, or buying path for customers to first try it or fill it in a, in a real world and then uh, order it on for like the most convenient channel e-commerce basically. So, um, so that's where the dealer locator can, uh, comes in basically. So, so people are looking where they can actually see the product, where they can actually try it on. And uh, only then after trying it on, they will come back to the, to the e-commerce. So, uh, it's like a built-in, I would say, path that takes you out of the e-commerce and then you 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 come back to it. Mm. And Liftoys is basically a really really great example uh, of this case. So I would say one of you know the biggest selling points of of Efos of Liftoys is this feeling that it's offering you you know the hovering over the water experience so definitely somebody wants to to uh to try it on before buying it so uh uh and maybe start even be involved in the community find a demo location and so on uh, or see it on some kind of a venue and definitely lift was is a uh is a great example of 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 this case and where when the dealer locator is actually one of the most important buying path for the clients. I love that kind of hybrid example. You know, we talk a lot with our retail clients about the importance of physical store locations versus online stores. And the lift foils example, like, like so many, is that, that middle path, right? Where you kind of want both. You want to be able to find the locations on your website and have, a, have smooth location features on the site but it doesn't replace the brick and mortar physical locations as well. Exactly. They, they are totally working together on this. Uh, so it's not intuitive because you basically allow the user to come out of your ship and you're not optimizing like the shorter spot, but uh, it's definitely working in, in, in this case. So. Mm -hmm. Well, so tell us more about how you approach the location features of your e-commerce sites. What are some of the best practices that you and your team follow when building a dealer locator or a store locator? Mm, all right. Mm, so definitely, mm, a first thing that comes to my mind is uh, definitely a performance. So that that goes, of course, for the whole whole e-commerce experience, the whole site. Mm, however, historically, we we sell a lot of locators or dealer locators that are basically slow so so to make a good dealer uh, locator definitely the performance is the key and it has to be snappy uh, the the uh, the map itself the interactions on the map the map transitions and the the whole layout or the whole interface around it also mm, have to be fast so 
uh, not only from the UI point of view, but also uh, from, let's say, auto suggestions. So uh, user want to type and get the auto suggestions as soon as possible. So the overall performance is is the key, definitely. Uh, we also believe that showing some results at every point it's it's vital so uh showing the user the information that there are no uh point of interest in in given location it's it's a useful information however um, showing where is the closest one or uh, maybe the closest convenient one for the user is is even even better um, and Another thing would be definitely when we when we talk not only about the mob but the, the whole dealer locator experience is the search. So um, so definitely it has to be human friendly. So uh, as, as as possible, of course. So no one wants to you know be forced to put a predefined query or think about how how I want to search about the location. So. This the search pro process is basically involves very very um, so I would say uh, so it involves different factors for the user and uh, and we have to take and this the search experience we have uh, has to take this into the consideration so um, for example user could just search for a country or for a region or for an exact street we we cannot predict that uh and that's why the search experience has to be as as flexible as possible so uh let's say you're you're, you're going to the vacation to the spain and you know you will have time for thunder and you want to try this evil uh that you you just heard about and you don't know exactly where you be in where you will be in Spain. So most likely you you, you just want to write, okay, are there any uh point of interest in the Spain? So you're looking at that. So um, and then then maybe later on when you know exactly where you 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 you're gonna be, you you will type Malaga or something just to see if it will be convenient for you. So uh yeah definitely we we have to support cases as such. Mm -hmm. All those different scales. I was really impressed looking at the, the lift foils locator map, how friendly it is for users, whether you're looking at the whole globe scale or whether you're zooming right into your particular city. Uh, it, it supports all of those different search scales. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. That was a very, very key point for us uh, that we invested a lot of, uh, lot of effort there. Mm -hmm. Well, and with these best practices in mind, uh, can you tell us why was Mapbox your mapping platform of choice? Mm, yes, yeah, so I've already mentioned the, the requirements for the performance and basically the performance was there, both in, in the UI side of, uh, of things, in the map, in the map transitions, uh, in, in loading the tiles of the map and with all of the APIs, like for example, geo, uh, geo coding uh, or suggestions or auto suggestions API. So that's one thing. Uh, another key factor for us, uh, since the whole e-commerce experience is built on top of CMS, in this case, Sanity CMS. So, so the whole site is managed by the client. Uh, we didn't want to have a different experience uh, when it comes to the dealer locator. So it was really important for us to to incorporate that into the existing system. So we want to keep the data about the locations in the sanity, um, and it was definitely a, a a major one for us to to be able to get that data and incorporate it into the map. Um, so uh, another thing was definitely so as I mentioned, lift voice is this design driven brand uh which which takes a lot of attention to details mm, and we didn't want to feel you know that the dealer locator is and historically that was uh, often the case 
where we see that those those dealer locators are like at different sides that you are that totally didn't match the or don't match the filling of the whole whole site. Uh, so this flexibility around the design, uh, uh, around being able to adjust it uh, in every detail to the exist uh, to the existing UI or UX was a crucial one. Mm. And basically, overall, I have to say, uh, Mapbooks was a robust and affordable solution for for our clients. So uh, everything was there. It just worked. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Well, and maybe uh, maybe you can take us to the map as well and talk a little bit about, you know, are there particular features of Mapbox that were especially valuable to your team or that you came away with just saying, you know, wow, that that really made a difference uh, for our process as a team or for our client in this case? Definitely. So uh, let me go to the uh, to the lift voice side. Let's start maybe from Mm, from the uh, front front end point uh, point of view, so when we go to a demo location, as you can see, it's loading very snappy, and uh, we can already see some results. Uh, in this case, in United States, and for us, uh, let me maybe go through this um, case that I was talking about. So, uh, let's assume I'm going on vacation to Spain. So, if we type it in the auto suggestions are just there so if i choose it i see the spain so and that's that's the point where where all of this is starting to happening so as you can see you you can see the whole spain uh typically you 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 wouldn't think about it uh what the map should show but in this case we are showing the whole spain we are showing some some area around it, but we are taking care of that, uh, that we show as much location as possible in any case. So, all right, I already know that I most likely will be able to, to try the EFO on uh, where, when I will be in Spain. And now I know that I will be, I don't know, in Malaga, for example. Mm. So let's go there. Mm. And I can already see that in Malaga, I, I, we lift voice don't have any locations, but what I can also see um, that there is one location very near. Uh, so that was definitely, uh, and this kind of, is, that this is the case I was talking about earlier on, so that, that you always want to show some, some of the location because, uh, if the user will look only for Malaga and we we just show the Malaga there, that that won't be the the actual answer because because the convenience is there. Mm, right. The so user. it's always so disappointing when you go on a store locator and you zoom in and there's oh oh there's nothing for me. I guess that's the end yeah. of my customer journey. Right. This is saying no no there's there is still hope. There's one just kind of over here instead. You want to travel to it. Exactly. There is also another case, like for example, let's say I'm I'm living in a Czech Republic. So, and I know for a fact that uh, there are no no locations there. So once again, I'm I'm I just want to know if there are any. There are no, but I, at least I can see there is one nearby in the Austria. So, things like that. And um, with this kind of a behavior, I have to say that uh, we so. For actually counting and and having all of that logic, we we used TurfJS here. It was it was a real pleasure to work with it together with the Matbox. So it integrated pretty pretty nicely uh, those the with with Matbox SDK. Mm -hmm. mm. Another thing, uh, as you can see, we have uh, filtering uh, here, and without without the case, I would say we were able to incorporate that filtering onto the map. So all of the locations are rendered on the map for the performance sake, basically. Um, we didn't want to use uh, render them um, in non-performant way and the filtering, it's it's just there. So uh, as you can see, we, we just see the demo partner locations. Right, very uh, fast. Yeah. 
yeah so uh that's the front end part of thing i would also like to show how it looks from a client perspective and in the aforementioned sanity so when we just go to the um, to the panel here uh i mentioned the whole site is is basically managed from from this panel and it would it would be very um, I would say disappointing uh, experience for the client if if the delay locator uh, would be treated differently. So now, if we go to the locations, we just have a uh, list of those locations, and if we go in here, um, we can uh, just fill any information there, uh, any information there about the location. The great thing that I can uh, I cannot unfortunately show right now is that uh, because we are after major update and uh, sanity is after major update, but uh, previously we we had this out of the box integration of map box. So we also use the map box inside of the panel, and from uh, from what I know, it will be also uh, available. Uh, very soon once again so that's that's also a great addition for us so we we can use the map box on the front end side of uh, of things but also in our cms or in the back end side of things so, right. so that uh, gave, gave your your clients kind of a preview of where they were putting their pin or or letting them choose the location on the map exactly ex and they also have a search field they also can, can easily uh, find the location then uh, just adjust it uh, in details on the map. So, um, so yeah, that that's something we were very happy um, about, and that's also the thing with the map box. So we feel like it's a very trustworthy technology, I would say, and it has uh, a lot of different integration with different technology, with which is basically a key when you create this headless e-commerce. Uh, so the composability of the whole system, the 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 support of of different technologies that in this technology that we are using, it's it's the key to success. And I know I know we've got developers watching this right now in the audience or watching it afterwards. Um, putting your kind of developer hat on, are there other behind the scenes things that you figured out with this map that you'd like to share? I know you mentioned TurfJS, like that that um, zooming effect that you have on your map where it still shows at least one location, that's not out of the box map box. So how did you adjust that zooming behavior so that it, it does that? Mm, definitely. So that was uh, that was thanks through the the suggestions API for the map box. So uh, the developers may notice that when we, for example, uh, uh, looking for a city here, so we we change the URL uh, right now, and we actually provide some information in the URL about the bounding box uh, that we are looking for. So uh right now we know that the berlin is have this this bounding box around it so we 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 know how to determine uh what's the area not only the point but the area that the user is looking for so and from there it's pretty straightforward to find for example a center of this area or maybe being able to expand this area so we have a berlin but somewhere very near the burn there is a point in this case we 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 get the center of the area we get this point and we know where we have to zoom how much we have to zoom and uh all of those operations all of those calculations were pretty much uh given us uh, out of the box through the map box sdk so that that was uh, pretty nice and uh and yeah, and that's I, I would say that's a tip of his iceberg because with that kind of uh, information given to you, you this this flow could be even more um, more robust or more complex. Uh, so yeah. Yeah, nice. Was there anything else kind of behind the scenes that you'd like to share before we switch over to questions from the audience? Mm. 
Yes. So uh, I would say um, I would say uh, one of the uh, I could actually mention that uh, when we we talked about the key features, but one of the nice things that we also get from the Mapbox was uh, was the Mapbox Studio um, feature. So that was a really nice thing for us because. Uh, we worked very closely with with the designers um, uh, with this project, and we want to make sure that uh, that the map basically falls into the same style. And there are a lot of things to design here and to think about how this map should look. And uh, from one thing is that we getting nice templates, map templates out of the box. Another thing is that we can then share those templates uh, as a starting point and allow uh, and basically um, allow designers to adjust them in the details um, and just send it to us. So uh, it's a it was I have to say it was a really collaborative process and uh, through through the Mapbox Studio and very seamless process. Mm -hmm. And so you can just hand over the design reins for the map styling to your designers. You don't have to get all their instructions from some mock-up and then figure out how to code it. They can they can just do it themselves. Yeah, yeah exactly. And uh, and it was actually a time saver. Like imagine that uh, how else you you would like to communicate how the map should look like. So so that would put the um, the burden of, on the designers to you know uh, prepare us. Uh, static mocks of the map, which mm. could be immensely hard. And for us to understand them, decipher them, and uh, and translate them to the code. And in that case, it, we just use the same tool for that to communicate around it. Nice. Well, that's great. Yeah, no, Mapbox Studio is one of my favorite parts of the Mapbox platform to play with. So I'm glad that your team got to work with that as well. Yeah. All right. Well, just watching the time, I'd love to switch over to some questions from the audience. I have seen some been coming in through our Q&A box. If folks, if you have any more, please feel free to add them in there and um, we'll, we'll either get to them live or we'll answer them in the chat. So first question that we have submitted here is, uh, what would you advise to a client who is trying to choose between a ready-made locator map template or plugin versus a custom locator map. What factors matter most to your clients? How do you sell this service? All right. So um, I think I, I partially already answered that through through uh, through the presentation. However, uh, I would advise them to go with the custom locator map. So of course, it depends on a, like a business case, but it could be invaluable. Uh, invaluable uh, part of your e-commerce or, or your site or your customer path, basically. And uh, it doesn't have to go, uh, it doesn't have to look differently from your site. It doesn't have to be, it can be treated as a uh, first class citizen, basically in this case. So uh, it's of course more complex approach. It, it requires more effort to do so. However, with a tools like Mapbox, uh, this process is, I feel like this process is, um, is as straightforward at, as it could be. And uh, basically, the um, you can easily scale it up in the future with, uh, with the tool. Whenever, you, when you have out of the box solution or some kind of plugin and so on, you, you will always will be limited uh, to what this generic tool uh, offers you. Yeah, I love that. We're, we at Mapbox, we're trying to make it easier for you to also make this a great pitch and an easy feature for you to add into your sites, right? I just, we'll, we'll take care of the complicated geospatial stuff and let you have fun building this feature. Um, all right, we have another question submitted here. Um, what bothers you most about locator maps that you see on other e-commerce sites? Are there any trends or issues that you wish would stop? Love that. Uh, definitely uh, 
definitely i i'm feeling like i'm going a, a bit of uh, in circle here but uh it's 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 just it basically the the slow slowness of existing dealer locators uh so um, being forced to to wait for the results uh or actually didn't didn't get that out of the suggestions or or wait for them too long and uh or wait very long for for the ties to load it's it's a no-go for me basically and i really wish uh, for it to stop mm, another thing and i think we can call it a trend is to treating this this dealer locator like a mm, additional feature i would say i i i saw a lot of different experience even to the extent that uh you you were taken to a completely different site in terms of URL to a different window uh when you clicked on a dealer locator and uh to some extent it may be like maybe the colors were the same but it was obvious that it's uh it's not a native uh native solution not a native things uh so definitely i would uh, i would like to start to see dealer locator being treated as an in integral part of the site mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah prevent that kind of like jarring user experience where you're suddenly in a different window and yeah it's a different completely different look and feel yeah another thing is uh and i've briefly mentioned uh this uh i i i want to be able to just write anything to the search field and actually search it how i'm thinking not mm -hmm. how the map or dealer locator expect me to. So, uh, yeah. Right. Just intuitive, easy to use search. Exactly. Great. All right. Well, I think we have time for one more live question here. Um, so let me see. We've got a, a future looking question. Um, this person writes, we're seeing location based features and interactive maps grow in popularity and consumers today have increasingly high expectations for map performance to your earlier points. Uh, it's a lot to keep up with as a developer. What do you think is the next hot location experience that clients are going to want on their sites, or what are you looking forward to building with? Mm. All right, so I think there are a couple of points that are like constantly a lot, at least uh, you can hear a lot of buzz in, in the space around those features. So uh, I see more and more, you know, those 3D visualizations, this globe-like features, which can uh, give you a feeling of, you know, this global or global um, global exposure of your business. So uh, I think Mm, I think that that's a really nice, uh, nice addition, and uh, I know it's either coming uh, to my books or it's there. So, um, so definitely that. Uh, maybe some improvements to 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 auto suggestions like auto filling the address, like uh, mm, being able to to uh, to even make the search process faster there, and the big thing. Uh, for me is the uh the improvements to uh to internationalization basically both in auto suggestions and uh on the on the ui itself on the on the tiles itself mm -hmm. mm, right so showing folks in their own language kind of regionalized to where they're they're coming to the site from yeah definitely mm -hmm. and uh and that falls into this part I was talking about when treating dealer locator as a first class citizen. So uh, more and more business are going global, uh, basically, and investing into this internationalization, regionalization. And imagine you 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 translated your site to many languages, you you regionalize your content, uh, you invest that a lot into that and then you go to the dealer locator and you only see everything in english on on mm -hmm. the map so um uh, yeah definitely that 
Well, good news on, on that front that is coming to Mapbox. It was part of our, our winter release, a uh, big push towards internationalization. And I know, yeah, the, the 3D world is definitely an exciting one. And there's some exciting new 3D styles coming through Mapbox as well. Well, thanks everyone. We are at time for questions. If you do have further questions, you can put them into the chat and we'll, we'll follow up. Um, thank you so much, Mikhail, for joining us today and walking us through your process and this great locator map that you built for lift foils. Uh, thank you so much also to everyone who's attended live or who's watching this recording afterwards. Um, any thanks. closing words there, Mikhail? Uh, yeah, the one thing I can say for sure, I would definitely uh, recommend using map books for building your custom custom uh, solutions uh, or custom dealer locators and at the same time i would definitely encourage you to try and go with that route of building your custom solution instead of choosing the out of the box one there you go that's our call to action make yeah. make beautiful custom maps for your clients and it, they will love it they will be worth it definitely. great Thank you so much, everybody. Have a great day and join us next month for our next customer story webinar. Thank you.